Hello and welcome to this review of the League of Dukes historical romance book series by Scarlett Scott. I'm Olivia, your favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot, and you're watching Random Olive Reads. Nobody's Duke is a book one of the series. We have a second chance romance between a newly widowed duchess and the illegitimate son of a duke. Eight years have passed since Ara and Clay have seen each other, but now that Ara's husband was brutally murdered by Irish terrorists, and Ara herself is also a target, the Home Office has assigned Special Agent Clay to protect her and her son. These two definitely have a lot of tension and bitterness towards each other, mostly because they each believe that the other person betrayed them all those years ago, even though the reader knows it was all orchestrated by Ara's disapproving parents. We get to read some chapters from the past and see neighbors Ara and Clay meet and fall in love in the forest between their lands. However, in the present day, it's all angry bickering and fighting and the epitome of miscommunication because they won't just come out and say why they're mad and betrayed by the other one, even though the physical attraction is still there among the heartbreak. Add in the fact that Ara's son and the new duke is the spitting image of Clay, we have yet another layer of betrayal and anger. The external danger drives a lot of the story forward, and the emotions and adrenaline is running strong here. And I think we eventually finally get some truth-telling in about the last quarter of the book. Heartless Duke is book two of the series. This book overlaps a little bit with the previous one and will make more sense when you read it in order. Leo is the head of the Special League of Agents, tasked with fighting off the Irish crime organization, and when he arrives at his half-brother's house for a wedding, he finds himself intrigued by his nephew's governess. Bridget is actually there pretending to be a governess so that she can kidnap the young duke in exchange for her own brother's freedom. A standoff in the woods leads to Leo shooting her and taking her prisoner. A lot of this book has Leo and Bridget at odds with each other since they're sworn enemies, but they're also fiercely attracted to each other and sometimes use that attraction to manipulate each other. The manipulation doesn't work very well since they both lose their heads when they surrender to lust. It's interesting to learn more about Leo's backstory since he's the stern and serious duke when it comes to work, but he has a debaucherous reputation to throw everyone else off, and then he claims to be completely heartless and untrusting of women. Big co uh, combination there, and it all makes Bridget's secrecy all the more painful for him. I did like seeing his relationship with his half-brother's mother, who was more caring and nurturing than his own mother ever was. Dangerous Duke is book three of the series. Griffin is a secret agent duke in the Special League, but he is currently being accused of treason and being kept up, locked up in another stuffy duke's house. That duke's sister, Violet, seems to have caught Griffin's attention while he has also ignited her passions. Unfortunately, Violet is engaged to someone boring and dull and prefer prefers Botany and his overbearing mother to Violet. She doesn't think that Griffin is guilty of treason and proposes to work with him to clear his name. Griffin needs all the help he can get and enjoys Violet's company, so he agrees to her offer. Both slowly start to open up to each other about their past traumas related to the deaths of their parents, and we see their dangerous scheme fall into place. Plus, the traitor is actually still out there making trouble, so we do eventually see how that crime is solved. Shameless Duke is book four of the series. After the events of the previous book, Secret League leader and Duke Lucian has been assigned a partner from America to assist with his investigation of the Irish terrorists. The overbearing and arrogant duke is completely surprised when the agent who shows up is the ultra-competent female Hazel. They spend the first quarter of the book arguing with each other until Lucian starts to begrudgingly accept Hazel's input. Things get even more fiery when they give in to their attraction and start a physical affair. Meanwhile, they're still trying to solve the case. And Lucian starts the book as someone totally judgmental, but slowly starts to realize his own limitations and softens towards Lu Hazel. 
Both of these people have tragic histories in relation to love, and it was nice to see them open up to each other about their past. Scandalous Duke is book five of the series. Everyone's keeping dangerous secrets here. Joanna has renamed herself Rose, given herself a fake background, and has become a world-famous actress. Unfortunately, her terrorist of a brother has found her and is forcing her to do some of his bidding, like sneaking documents and explosives from America to England. Meanwhile, Felix, who is a duke working for the home office, has decided to get closer to Rose, believing her to be the terrorist's mistress. She doesn't realize he's part of the home office and that he's just an entitled duke who wants an affair with her, but she resists anyway due to her own damaged history with men. They're both trying to prevent their own feelings from getting involved, but they are terribly attracted to each other and actually like each other's company. Lots of drama involved with explosions and threats of imprisonment, but ultimately Felix is willing to use all of his power to keep Joanna out of trouble. And finally, we have Fearless Duke. Grumpy Duke Benedict has scared off three typists who he thought were incompetent, and their typing school instructor and owner Isabella has come to pick a fight. They start the encounter completely at odds, and somehow Isabella is tasked with proving her competence by serving as Benedict's typist for the next week. Isabella tries really hard to hold on to propriety here, and... She has learned her lesson from her past with a lord who didn't marry her, while Benedict can't seem to keep his hands off of Isabella. Add in Benedict's meddlesome younger sister, and we have lots of chances for compromising situations. Eventually, we run into some danger with those Irish terrorists looming in the background of the series, and Benedict starts to realize the depth of his feelings for Isabella. However, Isabella insists that they cannot be together due to their differences in social station pretty similar to the other books of the series. The series works best when you read it in order since the events flow directly from one book to the next. There's an overarching plot of Irish terrorists and the special league of English agents investigating the crimes and trying to bring everyone to justice. This makes for highly dangerous situations where people tend to need to get rescued. The romance part of the story have a lot of steam and almost instant attraction for everyone involved, but definitely a lot of angst and hesitance to pursue any sort of relationships, mostly due to social class differences between the parties involved. In many cases, like in the last three books, the female main character with a much lower social status than the Duke is a lot more adamant that a relationship or marriage is completely impossible. Now, this type of plot is pretty common in historical romance, but it can get a little repetitive if you binge read the series. Overall, the series was enjoyable to read. I liked how everything tied together, and I'm still not quite sure they solved all of the crime at the end of the series, but we'll see if that flows into the next series by Scarlett Scott. Thank you so much for watching this video. Links to everything are in the description box. Like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.